Hi everybody, Karen Obi here for ZDNet. You know, it seems like we hear a lot about virtual reality, but augmented reality, uh, Greg Nichols, that's what you think will have the bigger impact. Explain that for us. Yeah, uh, augmented reality doesn't get the love that uh, virtual reality seems to do these days. Um, it's kind of inherently less flashy, uh, and it's confined mostly right now at least to our phones as opposed to kind of snazzy headsets. Uh, which give you kind of a, a tech angle to talk about or a hardware angle to talk about in addition to the, uh, the software angle. Uh, and that's why virtual reality has gotten a lot of love. But augmented reality is really going to dominate the world before too long, uh, precisely because it's native to the mobile devices that we already rely on. Um, you know, like, like it or not, augmented reality, it really offers the promise of turning the real world, uh, everything around us, into this clickable, searchable, data-infused experience. Uh, and soon you'll be able to point to your phone at, at, at pretty much any object uh, and pull up relevant data, um, place a quick order. Uh, you can forget about Facebook profiles. You'll soon be able to point a phone at a stranger and pull up relevant details about them if they've opted into that experience. Uh, and that's a scary prospect for a lot of people. Um, and perhaps, fortunately, augmented reality is still in its infancy. Uh, in fact, for the most part, so far, it's been kind of gimmicky uh, and relegated to the landscape of... Um, really at marketers, uh, hokey brand activations. I think we've all seen a few of those. Um, but that's starting to change. So this week I spoke to uh, Kasper Thijk here. Um, he's CEO and co-founder of Zapper. Um, and it's a, that's a mixed reality solutions company. And he gave me some predictions for 2020 as well as a, a really um, insightful look back at 2019 as well. All right, Greg, yeah, you're right. There, we don't hear as much uh, for sure about AR. And, and when it comes to like 2019, what happened with AR? Can we point to one thing that? Yeah, absolutely. So Casper says, um, you know, uh, connected packaging uh, in this last year really got a big boost. Um, it had already been kind of a reliable campaign strategy. Um, but we saw connected packaging uh, kind of swell thanks to some, some big hitters in the industry um, like uh, Nestle and McDonald's. And they kind of demonstrated how big businesses can approach the opportunity for AR on, on really a global scale. And that kind of helped legitimize the technology and, and created a ripple effect uh, that I think probably a lot of other brands are, are going to pay attention to. Um, he also said that spatial computing um, sort of made its mark. Uh, outside of marketing as a, as a tool for learning and uh, and training development, uh, which is good because if we're gonna if we're gonna establish augmented reality as kind of a legitimate tool, it can't just be a marketing tool. It has to it has to have some other utility. So um, you know we've increasingly become familiar with the positive effects AR has on uh, attention and memory encoding, which makes it this great uh, learning platform. So it was exciting to see um, adoption of AR kind of outside of that marketing context in the workplace where we observe practical applications um, and areas like, you know, employee onboarding, uh, training, professional development. Um, and uh, it, it, it really um, kind of proved how AR can drive efficiencies um, and, and decrease time to competency in, in core skills and uh, in memory recall. So there's a few examples of this, but uh, pizza chain Papa Murphy's, for example, um, they leveraged AR for this uh, employee onboarding program they had, um, and they created these AR-powered stations at key training locations. Um, and these types of use cases are, are becoming increasingly common across a variety of industries, um, like everything from pizza chains to financial services to healthcare to large consumer goods conglomerates, um, and even like higher education applications as well. Uh, so those are a couple ways uh, we saw AR really kind of come into its own in the last year. And when we, Greg, look ahead to 2020, what uh, what's in store for AI, AR? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, with a global market of, uh, of web AR compatible devices approaching, uh, let's see what his, uh, his, his stat was 3 billion devices. Um, and as, as standards for web AR um, kind of continue to improve, uh, the mobile web AR is really set to take off. Um, and, and just to draw kind of a, a finer line there, uh, most AR right now is um, utilized via proprietary apps, right? So companies that develop these apps have an advantage in that they can, they can roll out AR tools, but web AR is gonna allow pretty much any company of any size to access uh, AR on mobile devices. Um, but it's, it's, it's still a little bit clunky. Um, so it's really in the next year that web AR is going to take off uh, as, a, as, a, as a real tool, according to Casper. Um, the other uh, uh, prediction for 2020 
is that 5G is gonna have a huge impact. And we've really been hearing about 5G having an impact all over the place. Um, you know, everything from robotics and healthcare, uh, and now of course AR, to the conversation around 5G uh, and how it's gonna um, you know, affect a vast number of industries is, is really buzzing. And what has many excited uh, in, in the AR conversation is that it removes the reliance on strong Wi-Fi that, that you currently need to access a lot of these AR experiences on your mobile phone. Um, obviously, you're not tethered to um, Wi-Fi uh, often when you're on your phone, when you're on the go. Uh, so 5G will really allow you to have this kind of rich, embedded video, augmented reality experience uh, just about anywhere, and that's going to help penetration significantly. Um, excitement about wearables uh, is also kind of hitting a fever pitch. So, you know, the talk about uh, around wearables um, has already been dubbed, I love this, the face race. <laughs> and we expect the hype cycle is going to kind of jump exponentially when AR glasses with these heads-up displays start to enter the conversation and, and really when, when people start using them. Um, there, there are really a number of kind of fashion-forward brands that are bringing out these AR heads up displays to market. Uh, and that's where you really see kind of the vision that we initially saw with Google Glass uh, kind of take off in a, in a realistic way, in a way that Google Glass didn't quite pull it off um, in a consumer sense. Um, although Google Glass is having um, kind of a resurgence now in the uh, enterprise, uh, we really think these, these wearables are gonna take off um, in, a, in a consumer way in the next year uh, and, and even further out as well. So those are a couple ways. Yeah, yeah. And I like the face race. We'll have to see uh, what comes of that, uh, Greg. So um, finally, do you think, though, that AR will find more legitimacy in 2020? Yeah, I think we're going to see kind of a continued move toward uh, this always on AR. Um, and, and that's really going to help, um, I think, drive adoption in a big way. So like imagine a world in which AR is kind of completely integrated into our society and functioning um, at a kind of a constant capacity rather than kind of one-off marketing or storytelling campaigns, which is where you get a lot of the hokey uh, activations that, that we've seen. Um, so, you know, AR experiences are going to become the norm instead of this, this outlier. And the dream we've always had for AR, at least some in the industry have had for AR, uh, is, uh, is that, is that it's, it's really going to be incorporated into our everyday life and really give us that kind of rich um, contextual access to data uh, that right now, in order to access, we're going to have to stop and then use text-based searches to activate. You know, augmented reality is, is going to allow us to use the cameras that are now so ubiquitous to really um, access uh, uh, detailed information about the world. And that always on AR is going to come, um, you know, with, with things like 5G, for example, which we already talked about, and with the um, increased penetration of wearables like, uh, like glasses that don't look totally ridiculous, hopefully, um, but will allow us to have these heads-up displays that, that are kind of constantly monitoring and um, uh, allowing us to access information about, about what we're seeing in real time. All right, very interesting. Uh, Greg, we certainly appreciate it as always. And for more on AR, make sure you check out ZDNet. Thanks for watching.